Hey, Doug. Uh, hi, Peter. How are you? Good, man. Well, I'm going to jump right in. Um, I was very disappointed when you uh, left <clears throat> Accept a few years ago, 2018. It was sad to see you guys uh, split apart there. Now we have Ash Rain, fantastic <clears throat> album. Let's start off talking about that, how that project came together. It was 2018. I met uh, Nozomo backstage in Japan when we played Tokyo with Accept. And uh, we hit it off right away. We talked about music and whatnot. They exchanged numbers. And then a couple of months later, he called me and said, listen, can you do me a favor? Play a couple of bass tracks on these tracks. Yep. And I did. And he absolutely loved it. The record company loved it. And then he asked me again to do some tracks for Paul Shortino for a solo album he was producing. I did that. And then the record company recommended, why don't you do something with him? Because he had a band before, Destina. So we started talking about doing something together and, you know, it evolved from there. We came up with the name and uh, and then COVID hit, kind of, you know, it, we all know that. So there were there's two years that are gone. So that's why the album came out now. It actually was supposed to come out two years ago, but we already like writing new material. So might as well keep going. Lurie, the singer, absolutely incredible. Yeah. Incredible. Unbelievable. Andy, his premier drummer from Spain, outrageous. And Nozomu, you know, he's a big producer and he does a lot of other stuff and artwork and digital work and great guitar player, great look. So it's an interesting new band. You know, if you're a fan or a consumer of that type of music, it's really something you should look into because it's it's almost like a little bit like I always call it Maybe a little bit of Dokken and Motley Crue and Ingway on steroids. And then there's a little rainbow in there. It's really a nice, nice combination, I have to say. The elephant in the room, and this dropped last week, that uh, you are officially back with Udo Dirk Schneider. Yes, How has this all worked together? <laughs> First of all, Ashwain, at this point, you know, we just have one album, so we can't really play live. It's, it's not really enough. I would never go out and, and, you know, play like accept songs with another band. Yeah. You know how that. So I think we're not going to do anything live until maybe next year. And, and, and it's, it sounds like something good we could do in Asia, Japan and whatnot. So that's number one. Number two, um, Udo caught me in, in September when they started their big European tour and the bass player collapsed after the second show. And they had two days off and they were frantic. They didn't know what to do. So they called me up and asked me, listen, can you learn 16 Udo songs? That was on a Tuesday and meet us on Friday in Berlin on stage. And I said, well, I'll certainly try, you know, and I did and I showed up and you know, learned most of the stuff. And went from there and then the tour took about, took me about three months. We ended like the beginning of December. And, uh, and then uh, he asked me again if I could fill in for some dates, you know, they couldn't find anybody. And, and, and then he asked me flat out, he said, you know, everybody absolutely loves the the way you play and the fans. I get so much feedback that, you know, and I'm the happiest ever to have you. What would you say if you just come on board? And to be fair and, and honest, but uh, you know that I'm, I wasn't the happiest person with except before. So okay, you know, in my life, every day counts. You know, when, when you reach my age, I'm 65 now. I want to enjoy my life and I want to mm -hmm. do anything I don't like. You know, I have that right now. And you, you yeah. reach that level there, you just say, no. I really like Udo. You know, it's really amazing to be on stage with him. He is a legend. It's oh yeah, the band. You know, very respectful, and we get along so great. And it, it actually, it's a lot of fun. So, at this point, I said, you know what? Why not? You know, Ashwin is not going to do anything till next year, and uh, the whole festival season is coming up. And uh, I think I'll go for it. Why not? Now, as a journalist, I have to ask this. Now, you've been with Wolf and Accept. And now you're with Udo. Is the problem between Wolf and Udo a little bit? Is is that am I putting one to one and one together and getting two, or is there more? No, you're absolutely correct. The problem was always between Wolf and his wife and Udo. Oh. The, you know, never had a, I never had a problem with Udo, um, but you know they. I guess he wasn't sophisticated enough. He was a blue collar guy. He was a singer, and uh, you know it, it never worked out between them. They they just you know, hated each other. And uh, I, I said that in another interview a while ago. I said, you know, we made the biggest mistake. I, I was asked, actually, but Metal Hammer, you know, uh, worst accept album. And uh, I thought it must have been Eat the Heat because we we left our true destiny, the yeah. singer, which was 
the sound of the band is gone and we try with an American singer to sound like Def Leppard. Yeah. What a stupid idea there. I think 2005 we did a reunion tour with Udo, but I kept in, start, in touch with Stefan and, and through him with Udo. Yeah. Uh, Wolf and Garby always had their crowds their back and forth in the media and, and I kept out of that but I you know I, I told the guys in the band you know because they all chimed in you know F and Udo and, and this and then I'm thinking without Udo you wouldn't be in this band you know you're the singer now and you're the drummer you all you know humping on Udo you never met the man first of all you never yeah. said a word to him and, and it's so easy to judge somebody yeah. without him you wouldn't be nowhere did you feel like you were kind of stuck in the middle sometimes between them? Is Of course. Yeah. Of course. You, you, you go up together, you have a band, and, and fans, you know, people who follow a band, for, for them it's hard to, to fathom that and to understand what you're going through because mm -hmm. you spend half a lifetime together or even longer. And you trust people, and then, you know, and then trust is betrayed. And you, you, you think, why? What, 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 what is there to gain? A little bit more money? Power is that yeah. it? Is that, and yeah. I guess that that is what it is. That certain people need con need control. They can't let go. And if they don't have it, they're not happy. So in the end, you know, when you mention except albums, yeah, the first one was really good because that was stuff that mostly I had accumulated over the years. So Wolf and I wrote that first album together. That was killer. But after that, it was so predictable. It was the same riff. It's the same thing. The yeah. same. So we were very divided. You know, there was. Mm -hmm. One side just wanted, I never forget that. He said, we can just do this and ride in the sunset together. And I said, I think I have a different sunset in mind because I, I want to be relevant with my music. I just don't, don't want to just keep my fans happy and, and, and don't go anywhere else and just keep doing this. Yeah. You know, I want to evolve. I want to explore things. And, you know, I come from a progressive background. I was like Palmer, things like this. So so I was always like, oh, God, this is just that same stupid riff again yeah. to say vocal line da, 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 just another word i didn't want to do it it was just too many things that were just bad from the you know financial yeah. situations trust issues musical everything was wrong so that's why i left riddance i did because covid hit and you know for me it was great to dive into other things you know i did, did solo record for mick mars uh, played bass there with Ray Lucia from Korn. So I, I did a lot of things. I played with a lot of people, uh, played tracks with people from all over the world, from Iran, Greece, and, and I got exposed to some nice music. And, and then when Udo hit, you know, I, I wasn't aware of his albums, you know, how good they were. So now it's actually nice because he has two bands. He has Ureo, which they play their own material, and Dirk Schneider. And uh, we did one show in... Japan with Dirk Schneider, the first Dirk Schneider show. And that's just hilarious because it's like two except and the sun playing all except material. It's so authentic. Really, it was really like, oh my God. And it's, it's, you know, we're talking on stage about the old days and the fans are just enjoying it tremendously, I have yep. to say. The, the trick with except before was the third component that was Stefan Kaufmann. Great guitar player, great composer, producer, drummer. So the three of us, that was, you know, that's where the the accept sound came from, and then yeah. Udo was on top of that. That made it work. Now it was only two of us left. If it only goes one way, one steers the ship, and then that's it's my way or the highway, and that highway, you know, gets a little boring. Life experience, you need things happening in your life to to be able to write about something. You can't just fish sure. it out. Get a out of the air. Oh, let's write about this. It's yeah. all all that hard. For more interviews, news, reviews, and streaming rock radio, check us out at rockyoushow.com.